Now, there's really only one obvious solution to this dilemma, right? And that solution is to say that evil doesn't exist. You know, the discussion of evil, people say evil exists, but it's not really evil. If you think of it in the grand scheme of the universe, um, the atrocity that happened in this situation, in the big picture, um, isn't really evil. Um, you can make that argument. I am not going to accept that as a valid argument personally. Most scholars don't accept that as a valid argument for various reasons. And as in any discussion, uh, logical, semantic discussion, there's always going to be a back and forth. I don't have time in this video to go through the whole history of the argument. It gets exceedingly complicated. People spend their lives thinking, I'm going to spend my life thinking about this stuff. Um, but what's important is just to introduce you, um, sort of the beginner, to the idea of uh, the characteristics that God has and try to think how could God have these characteristics and we also know that evil exists. So let's try and work our way through it, right? Well, if God is omnipotent, if he has all power, he should be able to have or she should have the, the ability, the power, to prevent evil from occurring. You can imagine that um, as a father, um, some danger were to happen to someone that I love. Um, if I thought or if I saw that danger was going to happen to my child, I would do everything within my power to prevent that um, danger or that evil from manifesting on someone that I, that I cared for. Similarly, the argument states that, well, if God is all-powerful, if he's omnipotent, he should have the power, he should possess the power to prevent things from happening. Right? He should be able to stop evil from occurring. Well, the response to this, and actually the response to almost all of these, is to say that God has the power, but he won't exercise the power because it interferes with free will. That's a whole nother discussion, but that is, that is a, a very contested point. It's a very, very good stance. Um, whether or not it's right, you know, there's no verification that's possible. So um, just to let you know, one uh, rebuttal to the claim that God won't stop things from happening is the, the counter argument to suggest that, well, the reason why God doesn't prevent things from stop, uh, happening, evil from occurring, is because he, she uh, has imbued us with free will. And to transgress that free will is something that God's not willing to do. Uh, because by definition, we have free will. We have the, uh, the ability to determine the outcomes of our own faith, or of our own life rather than our faith. Okay, next thing is, well, what if God is all-knowing? Well, if God is all-knowing, he should know that evil occurs in the world, right? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be um, anything abstract. It's not a difficult thing to understand. And, you know, a child is murdered, uh, um, uh, a woman is battered, uh, a man is tortured. These things happen, um, and it is apparent that they are atrocities. They are labeled as atrocities. They are almost universally recognized as instances of evil. Now, I'm not going to get into torture because that's definitely debated. <laughs> I'll label torture as evil somewhat. But um, with respect to uh, omniscience, uh, God should know that these things are happening, right? He should have the ability to know that these things are happening. And his knowledge of it should incentivize him to use his power to prevent it. I know it's going to occur. And if I know it's going to occur, then I should use my power. Remember, this is a conditional now, right? The antecedent being, if I know that evil is occurring, then I should use my power to prevent evil from occurring. However, evil still exists, right? Evil still exists, so how does this work, right? There's the power, there's the knowledge, but there's evil. Why? I, there's still a problem. The last thing is, on this non-exhaustive list, is to say that God is all uh, loving. Well. If God is all-loving, he should care enough to prevent evil from occurring um, to those that he loves, right? Since he's not a sadist, right, by definition, um, and since he is benevolent, and he's omnibenevolent at that, he should have enough love to motivate him to act on behalf of those who are victimized, targeted for extermination, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, without belaboring the point, I think you get the idea now. In discussing the characteristics of God, we say that God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent. Um, however, 
We also understand, at least some understand, most actually understand that evil exists. How can we maintain the claim that God has these characteristics and also maintain um, the claim that evil exists? It seems that it's impossible. The only way um, we can do that, at least logically, now I'm not saying spiritually, you can talk to your religious leaders, um, your clerics, your rabbis, your, your pastor, your priest, uh, and figure out, you know, discuss it with him or her, how this is resolved religiously. How this is res resolved um, logically is to say that at least one of these um, claims is false. If at least one is false, then it makes sense why evil exists because there's a limitation in some sense in one of the characteristics that God has. So, for example, if God isn't all-powerful, well, yeah, I understand why evil exists now because he doesn't have the power to prevent it, and so on and so on. In order to do that properly, however, what we need to do is we need to construct a truth table and we'll make sense of it. Again, as I'm saying, I'm not saying that God doesn't have any powers. All I'm saying is that logically, in order for us to make sense between the claim that God has these powers and also make, claim, uh, make sense of the claim that evil exists, is to say that at least one of these claims must be false or you can make the the other claim and just say that it's false that evil exists evil isn't really evil i'm not willing to make the claim that evil is an evil so at least logically i'm willing to investigate the idea of seeing which one of these might be false okay so what we do is we create a truth table and we put truth on one side and we put falsity on the other side we put true on one side we put false on the other side now, the way that I do it, just the easiest way to do it, the easiest way to explain it to um, um, new viewers and new people um, to the discussion of the characteristics of God, is just to put one, two, and three on this side. Well, what if we say one is false? What if we say that two is false? Well, what if we say that three is false? So it could be the case that one is false, it could be the case that two is false, or it could be the case that three is false. These are all the possibilities that we could have. Either this is false, this is false or this is false. We're not going to get into the, this, the, the possibility that more than one is false. This is assuming that only one is false. Well, if only one is false, then we can say that at least two others are true, right? So if one is false, then obviously two and three can be true. So we put two and three over here. And actually, I should do it properly. Uh, two and three. So we can say that one is false, but then two and three are true. We can say that 2 is false, but then 1 and 3 are true. Or we can say that 3 is false, and that 1 and 2 are true. So these are all the examples. Because it's important to understand that when discussing the characteristics of God, we're not talking about this in a vacuum. We're not saying that God has this, or he has this, or he has this. We're saying that God has this, and he has this, and he has this. So, in discussing the, the concept of evil, we have to think about all three of these powers, all three of these characteristics simultaneously, right? The only way to do this simultaneously, then, would be to construct uh, the truth table. So, if I want to talk about the existence of God, and I'm assuming these three characteristics, and I also want to talk about the problem of evil, the only way logically to make sense of both of those two stances, which seems to be um, you know, contradictory or problematic at least, is to say that at least one of these characteristics isn't true. 